So I want to break down um, the way that that level was designed um, and created. So I started out with the template scene so that I had all the parts and pieces that I could use. Um, the automatic door was about the only thing that I had to hook up. Um, that and there was a little extra thing in the uh, reference manual for how to connect the health crates. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well. If you look over here, what I've done is I've taken the whole level and I've put it all inside of objects that'll allow me to uh, keep this scene organized because there's probably 500 different components uh, just with the way it's set up right now. So what I started with was this level design is basically just a plane. And to that plane, I took the level design diagram, the combo image, and attached it to it. Um, this way it kind of gives me an image plane that I can build the level off of. Um, using the, the ProGrid snaps, uh, I kind of placed it and I adjusted my scale. So the final level that I built was scale 12 by 7. Um, seems like it worked pretty well. The original, the original design was a 20 by 10. And as you can see, it's about a third bigger. And what I quickly realized with it, I, I got managed to get a ways into that, but what I quickly realized with it was it was just too much room. Um, it ended up becoming very, very boring as far as the gameplay. So just as an aside of what not to do, this is the original, this is the level design diagram uh, at the full 20 by 10 scale. And this is the level that all the way to the wall pieces that I went ahead and tried to construct based on that scale. But you'll quickly see that there's a lot of room. And it doesn't work too well for the scale of the enemies. Very large area. I had to extend, in order to keep the scale, I had to extend the staircase two extra levels. And it's just massive. What also happened is I tried using the floor tiles and bake the nav mesh on them. It was very, very slow, and I kept noticing that the chompers would get stuck in their, either in their square or in their tile, and that would prevent them from moving around. So using the Pro Builder base for your nav mesh, much better way to go. So make sure as you're working on this, uh, you build, build a room, see how it feels, see how things work, See how the nav mesh is working on it. Take it one kind of almost like writing a, a computer program. You want to take it one small step at a time, make sure it works, and then move on to the next section. Once you have the functionality there, you'll have a lot fewer issues when you decide to make things better looking in that you won't have to go back and, and fix logic issues that, that, will, that will come up. So I shrunk it down. Um, you could probably shrink it even smaller than this. Um, but this was the, the size that I went th went with. Uh, by play testing it, it was able I was able to keep it interesting um, throughout. But this was the form I used as as a guide. From this level design template, what I ended up doing was building a level base. So each one is each one of these is a room. And the only thing that I did was convert it from the regular cube here and just flip the normals over so that it became a room. Carved out spaces where the doors went and set everything set, set everything up. With this with the uh, snaps tiles each tile whether it's a wall or floor tile pretty well is sized three by three 
So if when you're working on this, go to face mode here. So when you're working on this, to save yourself a lot of grief, if you go up to your pro grids and change this snap setting from one to three, what will happen is it will only build your rooms in sections of three. It's a real quick way of setting things up and making sure that your tiles will work out real well with um, when it comes to the decoration side of it. Um, in the, in the case of, of this level, and I'll show you, I did not start off that way, and there were certain junctions that did not work for that. However, that e would be the easiest way to, to build it. So that was what I ended up doing for the, for the rooms. Along with the rooms, I also started laying out the level extras. And... The doors. So if we look at the door section and then we have our level extras. So the doors were, were key as far as placing all the doorways, the automatic doors, the switch doors, uh, placing those where they needed to be based on the design diagram just so I knew where everything was going to be snapped into place. That way when I started building my rooms I knew where to where to place edge loops in order to construct the rooms based around the doors. With the level based out, you should have full functionality. That's the most important part here. So the lava pits should stop you, the doors should open. Kind of a kicker is the moving platform. There's been a lot of issues with the moving platform. Uh, I tried replacing the cube at one point in time and it definitely broke the, the situation. So as you can tell here, this is the this is the ramp staircase that's in the game. Um, and instead of using its collider, I'm just using a pro builder ramp that I built. That way she can get up, the character can get up the stairwell without trying to jump the steps. But it matches closely enough closely enough to where you're not really going to notice. Uh, I had to resize the staircase just a little bit so that it would fit. Um, but otherwise it worked out pretty well. When it comes to the health crates, they are not completely set up. So here I have a regular health crate. I think this was one of the one of the original ones. And if you look down this list over here, interact on trigger, there is a missing. There's no a runtime, no object, no function. What you have to do is change this to the Ellen that's in the scene. And then the function will be damageable and reset damage. That way the health crates are enabled. So the three that I use in, in this game, in this level, are, are already set up that way. Make sure that you also do place a check the checkpoints. I believe I only used one, but it's important that you move through the first checkpoint so that when you die, it'll, re it'll respawn you back to that location. You can place the other ones around if you want, um, but that's important as well. These base parts are the ones that have the nav mesh. So the nav mesh is baked into, along with the colliders, is baked into these base rooms. Okay, so at this point I have doors, I have switches, I have the moving platforms, I even have the enemies and making sure that the enemies work. Yes, it's a lot of enemies. But it's all hooked up to the nav mesh. And you can see that the chompers are all moving, the spitters are all moving. Everything seems to be functioning pretty well. So 
so that's that at this point that's just all the testing phase so at this point okay I consider this sort of like phase one is done the game the level should play through I can get a good idea of how the game how the level is going to play uh, if there's anything broken from a from a, a, a technical standpoint from a from a logical standpoint this is definitely the point of, of trying to fix it so level extras platform the base level is, is enabled we have our doors and then we have the level decor and so with the level decor that's when the big change happens from this to this and as you can see this floor here is looking pretty gnarly and that's because all these tiles are snapped in place right onto and right on top of the pro builder assets these tiles while they do have colliders are not set to be part of the environment I don't want and they do not have uh, nav mesh attached to them at all with these rooms the rooms have colliders and the rooms have the nav mesh what I end up doing is just turning off the mesh renderer and here you can see the collider cage and then you can enable and still see the nav mesh so this is the actual level here um, and now you can also tell that since I left the floor on you can see where the floor is the game here with just the floors no walls is still playable so I'm almost uh, looking at a wall hack version of, of, of the level where I can still work I can still move I can still play the game the monsters are going to behave like I would want them to once I've turned off that mesh renderer the base level is is there as the cage that's going to control the gameplay now I can go in and enable the walls and the ceilings and then let's go ahead and pull these lights on so now I can enable the lighting and well, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go back to my lighting tab and change that to the skybox, which creates the more interesting lighting in, inside the level. Anything else that you would want to add, you can add right on right on top of that. Um, I would I would suggest saying level extras anything that's going to be everything from the consoles the structural boxes the acid pits moving platforms anything anything of that nature kind of put it in its own little section so if I want to add any more set dressings any barrels crates uh, other objects that's what I would add and I'd add added to it this way but the base level is going to be your core and so the enemies the and all all the other functions should should work that way the rest of it is just again going to be part of making it more, a much more visually interesting uh, level design